Okay, in this video we're going to look at working with the keyboard in iOS uh, Xcode 4. For example, we're going to have some text fields and we're going to set it up so that when we enter information into a text field we have not only just the keyboard pop-up but also an appropriate keyboard. For example, text, so we have letters here, we can switch to the number keypad. This is basically the default keyboard. We can have an email address keypad, which is specifically to help users enter email information faster with an at sign symbol and a period here. And we can also do a number keypad where the user can easily enter numbers. So we'll look at setting up those properties for different types of text fields, as well as when we type some information into a field, we can retract the keyboard so that when we click return, then the keyboard will go away so that we're able to access the rest of the screen again. That's not an automatic thing. So we'll have to write some code in order to make the keyboard retract. So in addition to pressing return, we're also going to set it up so that when you tap somewhere else on the screen, it will retract the keyboard as well. So return or somewhere else on the screen. So that's what we're going to be gearing for in this video. So let's get started and create a new Xcode project. Okay, so in Xcode, did a new starting a new project it's going to be a view based application and we'll give it a name keyboard fun and find a place where you can save your file and know where it is and we'll click create and the first thing we'll do is go into the interface builder so the nib file and I'm going to prop up the properties panel over here and set up our our interface first. So I'm going to start with a, a button and then we'll add some text fields. So we're just going to have three. And let me add some text to our button. And I'm going to widen these so we can have a little more space to work with. Now one of the design techniques, or it's good design on your iPhone, instead of using labels next to each of these, which would take up more screen space, and screen space is very valuable in um, a small phone interface, we're going to use placeholder text. So if I click on my first text field and in the properties panel over to the side, I'm going to change, um, type in some placeholder text. So like enter some text. And then that appears in the text field. So that eliminates us having to put an extra label on the screen and clutter it up. So we're going to say enter some text. We'll do email. and then we'll do enter some numbers. Okay, so before we write any code, we can just see what happens automatically through Xcode. So I'm just gonna run this. Okay, and um, if I click in the text field, my keyboard automatically pops up. It gives me the default keyboard and I can either type on screen or on my keyboard. But now when I hit return, it doesn't take away the keyboard. So that's one functionality that usually should happen. Xcode does not automatically do that for us, so we have to write some code to get that to happen. The other thing that generally happens too is if you tap someplace outside of your text fields, it will retract the keyboard and that's not happening either. And again, that's code that we're going to have to enter in order to get that to go. Now, 
we've specified this as text and email and numbers, but we have the same default keyboard for all three. We can go in and change the default or change it to a different style of keyboard depending on the information we want the users to enter. And that can be helpful, especially when you're working on a small screen and you're tapping things. You want uh, it to be fast and easy for your users to enter information. So I'm going to stop the simulator and we'll come back here and we'll work on setting up some of the properties. Just pulled the object panel down here so I can access the properties of the text fields a little quicker. So when I select one, you can see that we have a bunch of different options in properties that we can change. And right now we're just focusing on keyboard. So you can see we have the default for um, our text fields. Let's select the email text field and change the keyboard style to email address. And you saw in the demo that it pops up and it gave us the at sign symbol and the dot. So things that are more commonly used for an email data entry. And we'll do one for numbers, so we'll change the appearance or the style for that to be a number pad. So just by changing those properties, let's see what happens. So if we run this, clicking in here we get our text field, clicking in the email we change it so that we have our email information to better enter and then when we click the numbers we have our number keypad. So these do change when we click in the different text fields but still we can't get that keyboard to retract so that we can get down to our submit button. So we're going to have to enter some text to get that to function. So I'm going to quit simulator and I'm going to close out my properties panel to the side and we'll go into the editor. Okay, now to set these up in our header file, I'm going to right click and drag from each text field down into our header file to insert an outlet. So releasing that, I'm going to give the outlet a name, a different one for each one, so we'll call this some text and connect it. And it creates our property for some text. And again, repeat for the next text field. So we'll call this email text and connect. And number text. So it created our properties. Now I'm going to pop back into the program and just show you what it is we're trying to do. When the user hits this return button, we want the keyboard to disappear. So when we hit this return button, it generates what's called a did end on exit event. So did end on exit event is generated and we can use that in a method, an action method, in order to retract the keyboard. So we're going to set up these two text boxes or text fields so that when the return key is clicked it will do a did end on exit event and uh, we will retract this keyboard. So I'm going to start with the first text box and I'm going to right click to bring up our text field box. And we can see that the events, there aren't any events assigned to this text field. So we're going to choose the did end on exit. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this down into our header file to insert an action. You can see it pops up over there with a little sign that says insert action. So we want an action to occur when the user clicks that return or that done button. So we have the connection as an action and we're going to give it a name, let's just say done typing. So when we're done typing and they hit the button, 
we have a did end on exit event, so we're going to create a connection. And you can see that it's been added here on our set events for done typing. I'm going to close this. We can see that over here it added our action done typing. And if I switch over to the implementation file, all the way at the bottom, it's usually where it adds it, um, we have our done typing method. And we need to add a little bit of code in here to say, okay, when that happens, when they hit that done button, what should occur? And what should occur in here is the sender, which is where it started. It's resign, resign first responder. Now, resign first responder, the first responder is the control that the user is currently interacting with. And when the text field is clicked, then it pops open the keyboard. So the keyboard becomes the first responder. It's what they're interacting with. So in this point, when they hit the done button, it's going to generate the did end on exit event which will trigger this action, the done typing action, and it's going to resign first responder or resign, take away the keyboard and put the focus back into the text field. So let's see if that works. Let's run it. Click in our text box, enter some text, hit return. Yay, the keyboard goes away. Email. Type in some stuff for email, hit return. Ah, uh, it does not go away. We only set up this first text field to use the done typing method. We have to set this one up to work as well. So let's close our simulator. And I'm going to go back to the interface builder and I'm going to right click on this, choose did end on exit, and I'm going to take it and I'm going to connect it right to the done typing action that's already there. Let me move this over in case you can't see it too good. But we take this did end on exit and we're going to connect it to the same done typing method so that it will do the same thing. And you can see here we connected it. So now if I run this, we type in some text, return the keyboard goes away like it did before. We're into email, tap return, the keyboard slides away. Now we can't do this for numbers because there is no done button, there's no return button. Uh, this button here is the backspace, and this doesn't do anything. So we have to figure out another way to do this with uh, numbers. And we'll also set it up so that when we tap anywhere that is not um, another object in here, that the keyboard will retract. So that's the next thing we'll work for.